Hey, I'm Ron Gerodos from KeyboardImprov.com and welcome to our 20th video in our series of the Complete Beatles for Piano. This is uh, the great Strawberry Fields Forever. It's uh, probably definitely one of my top three favorite Beatles songs along with Across the Universe and I don't know, the third one probably <laughs> varies from day to day. But Strawberry Fields Forever is a very special song however you want to look at it. And we're going to look at this from uh, several angles. One is how to use it as a tool for, uh, or a vehicle for improvisation and how to personalize it, how to make it our own and really play a piano version that sounds good. Because what we're discovering in this series, and I didn't know it going in, so I'm learning this too, what we're discovering is that a lot of times the Beatles songs, even though they may be great songs, um, they sound good when you just play them on piano, but they don't really sound as uh, special as they could. Um, you know, even the Beatles, and we're going to see this with this tune, they weren't just satisfied usually with just playing the song straight. Even a song like um, Yesterday, which is a great, great song, right? You know, Yesterday. That could certainly just be solo guitar, and it sounds great. And if we want to play it like that, we can. But even that, they, 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 um, they framed it with this uh, string quartet, right? So it just, just added something very special and unique. And if we're just playing them on the piano, we, we don't get that. We don't get their orchestration. We don't get the wonderful sound of their voices. So I find that, um, at least for me, and what we're kind of discovering here, is that we have an, an opportunity to make them our own and personalize it. So Strawberry Fields Forever, this is John Lennon. This is one of the songs, even though they're credited, McCart McCart Lennon and McCartney is co-writing the songs. That was really for business reasons. After a certain period, fairly early on in their development, sort of like the beginning to the middle transition, um, they really started writing separately. And you can usually um, uh, hear who wrote the song, usually, by who sang it. And this was a song where uh, John Lennon came in and, hey, I've got this new song. And he played it on acoustic guitar and according to George Martin, the producer, they were just astounded. They couldn't believe this song because it was so different from anything that had come before. Um, the images are, um, um, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's not like a, a story song. It, it, it talks about something. Strawberry Fields was a place where um, John Lennon liked to go into this garden. There was a garden there. Um, and, and he felt very peaceful. He used to climb the wall or something, go in this garden in Liverpool when he was a kid. And he was thinking back at this very peaceful uh, time when he was alone, he could think and, and you know, um, uh, just, just really kind of escape probably into that, you know, sort of happy place we, we like to go to. And, uh, and he wrote this. Um, so uh, they, they didn't, you know, they, they, he comes in with this song. You can hear, you can't hear the original one. George Martin always had said that he wished that they had had the uh, tape recorder going when, when Lennon was strumming the guitar that first time. So you can't hear that first time, but we can hear an early version of him just strumming and playing guitar. Um, you can find it, uh, I'm sure it's on YouTube and whatever, Incarnation. And um, the amazing thing about this song, which relates to us as uh, musicians, is that the Beatles didn't quite know what to do with it. It would have worked well with just acoustic guitar. It would have been like a yesterday, you know, maybe they would have added strings or something. But they decided, to, oh, well, what could we do? So it, the song went through like 25, 26, 27 versions. And um, I saw an LP, a bootleg LP, a long time ago in the 90s in, in Greenwich Village in New York City in, in an old record store. And I, I wish I had bought it because it had all the versions. Um, you can't find that. That's been on YouTube once in a while, but they tend to take it down. So you, you can find different, different renditions though. And on the Beatles anthology, they did, I think, six, three or six or something. But the point is that the Beatles didn't give up. They did it with the four of them playing instruments. Okay, it's working, but let's try a little jazzier beat. Let's try more snare drum. Let's try less snare drum. Let's try acoustic guitar. Let's try electric guitar. Let's try different keyboards. And uh, let's bring in an orchestra. You know, and the final version, if you listen to it, there's a place where it splits. The first half is a little more like an electric rock band, the Beatles, and the second one is a little more orchestral, where cellos come in, and, and you hear this, uh, I'm assuming it's George Martin doing the arrangement, this, this orchestral arrangement. And the famous story is that they were at different tempos 
and in different keys. They were even experimenting with different keys to see which one John Lennon sounded the best singing in. And one day they just didn't know which version was, they liked the beginning of the rock one, they liked the ending of the orchestral one. And um, they just basically said to the engineer, uh, Jeff Emmerich, uh, see what you can do. So he stayed late at night and he found out that if you sped up one of them and slow the other one down, the pitches and the speeds lined up. Total gratuitous accident, right? Gratuitous thing, but, uh, but he made it work and that's what we hear. So if you listen to it, you can hear, it's on one of the breaks where the rhythm section stops and Lennon says, um, let me take you down because I'm going to, and then it comes back in and it's not just the Beatles anymore, it's the Beatles with an orchestral um, orchestration as well. It's, it's pretty amazing to hear that for the first time. I wouldn't have picked up on it myself unless I um, read about it. So what do we do with this song? Um, so, it, I mean, it's a great song, right? It has a nice verse. It's kind of modal. It starts in A, but then five chord is a minor chord. And this is one of the geniuses of Lennon, is that he wasn't limited by the chord progressions he already knew. He was very open, as is Paul McCartney, to, to finding where the, the song wants to go. And then he goes to um, F sharp seven. Later that becomes a C sharp diminished chord. Very mysterious. And then he just goes four, five, major six. And then four, one. It's got this plagal cadence, which is very relaxing. So again, it relates to what he's talking about, this place where he used to go, this garden where he would just uh, feel comfortable and comforted. So it, Something else Lennon likes to do is change time signatures. One, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So it's a measure of three on strawberry. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. He does that a lot. Um, uh, 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 happiness is a warm gun. Um, uh, across the universe has some odd. Uh, time signatures in there. Uh, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds starts in three and then it goes to four for the chorus. A um, lot of songs like that. And I think he did it intuitively. He didn't want to go, strawberry fields forever. That would have been four four for both measures. And it would have sounded great. Most of us would do that. Strawberry fields forever. But he just went right into it. Strawberry fields forever. So he wasn't necessarily thinking, okay, I'm going to do a measure of three and I'm going to do a measure of four. He sang it and strummed it the way that felt comfortable for him, where the phrase unfolded naturally. And then that became the time signature, rather than how most of us do it. We kind of think of that in advance. A very intuitive musician and wasn't afraid to go with his intuition and what felt right for the song, even if it wasn't, quote, traditional or the easiest to play. So... Um, uh, just two, two uh, insights into uh, Lennon's um, uh, creativity and genius, the shifting time signatures and unusual chord progressions that go beyond what he might have ever played before. But he was hearing something or he experimented till he came with it and it, it married the melody. So, um, and, and again, this nothing is real line, nothing is real, has outlines a diminished chord, which is kind of a mysterious sound, right? I don't know where I am harmonically, and he doesn't know where he is uh, mentally, because nothing seems real, right? Um, great, great song. So how do we make it our own? Um, I find that I like to embellish the melody a lot, change the rhythms, put in some little counter Fills, almost like a, a finger style guitar or a little orchestral thing um, and uh, sometimes get away from the melody a little bit um, sometimes I like to improvise on the chord progression sometimes I'll just take that strawberry feels forever that major four chord D major seven to a the one and just improvise on that sometimes in three four one two three Can be a challenge keeping that three four and the four four and then sometimes i'll just do it in four four both measures one two three four one. get a little more propulsive kind of groove going that way so um, because i'm playing solo and when you're playing solo for yourself we, we can um, 
we don't have to plan it in advance. We can just say, oh, well, let me just start improvising here or insert that chord progression, a 4-1 here or extend this or something or go to a verse, maybe do three verses in a row, whatever we feel like. If we're in a band, we have to plan it out uh, more than a little, right? <laughs> Let everybody know what we're doing. Uh, but solo piano, we can try different things. So I'm just going to start with the intro. Um, I'm not going to play it with the sort of blocky chord way that Paul McCartney did I, on the Mellotron, I believe. Um, but I'm, I'm going to do like this, uh, sort of take a, a, a cue from Lennon coming in that first time with his acoustic guitar. And I'm thinking like an acoustic guitar, some, some finger style. And just sort of see where that takes me here. All right, Strawberry Fields Forever, one of the greatest songs ever composed.
wow, I don't think I've ever played it exactly like that before, and it was a lot of fun. So hopefully that gives you some ideas, those things we were talking about before, how to extend the sections, the four to one. Sometimes I did it in three, sometimes I ended up taking them uh, uh, in four four, sort of not like Lennon wrote it, but um, seeing the implications of what he did and um, playing it in my own way. That's really the goal here, how we can internalize these songs the way the Beatles intended them, and then also try new things, which actually, as I was saying before, is what they did. That's why they went through like 26, 27 versions of this song, because they're just trying different things and never giving up. We give up too soon sometimes, but the Beatles never gave up. That's why we um, listen to songs like Strawberry Fields Forever to this day. Thanks for being here uh, each week, going through a different Beatles song. Like I said, not in any particular order. If you're looking to take your playing to the next level and really getting fluent at the piano, check out my video course at keyboardimprov.com. And good luck with your playing.